Some of the most senior German generals of the Second World War were involved in war crimes. And at the end of the conflict, they were brought to trial for carrying out Hitler's orders. For example, Wilhelm Keitel, the most senior military commander, was following the Nuremberg trials, brought into the execution chamber of the prison, where he encountered the infamous American executioner, John C. Woods. Stalin would, during the conflict, also purge his own military, and many Red Army soldiers were removed, then executed by the NKVD. But Hitler would, years before the Second World War broke out, order a huge purge, which many members of his military and former senior members of his bodyguard units were executed in what was known as the Night of the Long Knives. Hitler even had his best friend, Ernst Röhm, the head of the SA, the brown shirts, shot dead by the SS. But one man who succumbed to the purge was a general major and the head of the Nazi military intelligence service, Ferdinand von Bredau. But what was the story of his life and what was the story of his execution? Join us today as we look at this and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Ferdinand von Bredau was born on the 16th of May 1884 inside of New Ripin in the Kingdom of Prussia. He joined the German army and he became very close friends with General Kurt von Schleicher. In November 1918, he was promoted to the rank of captain and von Bredau was described as blindly devoted to Schleicher. Following Paul von Hindenburg's election as the president of Germany in 1925, Schleicher worked as his political advisor and it was said that he was an unscrupulous master of political intrigue, vain and ambition and he sought to promote his own influence and that of the army. With this, Ferdinand von Bredau was mixing with the most powerful politicians within Germany. Von Schleicher would later become the Chancellor of Germany and before he became the Chancellor, he hoped he would weaken the Nazi party and bring some members into government, but his government would be the one that was in just before the Nazis came to power and Hitler would succeed him as Chancellor. He would be ousted by Hitler in January 1933, but von Bredau had been involved in attempting to get Hitler's support to Schleicher's government when he was a Chancellor. But towards the end of his regime, Bredau would become the leader of Schleicher's personal information service and he was ahead of a number of secret service organisations. He was rather powerful across Germany and was even the head of the SS's Sicherheitsdienst, the intelligence agency of the SS, which was overseen by Reinhard Heydrich. However, he would later be sacked and his attempts before of trying to control the Nazi party and parts of Hitler's group was futile. Ferdinand von Bredau would continue to ally himself with Schleicher and he would attempt a political comeback, but his work could have been seen as an attempted coup and possible ousting of Hitler from power. Because of this, von Bredau had even collected a cabinet list of people and proposals and Hitler would remain as a chancellor in this and Schleicher was to serve as a vice-chancellor with Ernst Röhm, the head of the SA, serving as a new defence minister. These were all proposals for a new government which could have been deemed as being treasonous. However, at the time it was clear in 1934 that something had to give with regards to the power struggles and there was a conflict between the SA and the Reichswehr, the German army and military and this was a dangerous situation. Some historians have interpreted that Ferdinand von Bredau's scheming to alter the cabinet was a plot to overflow the Hitler government and also Hermann Goering and Heinrich Himmler, two senior advisers and close friends of Hitler, believed he was doing this. These two were plotting against Ernst Rome themselves and Himmler and Goering played on Hitler's insecurities about his power and they would whisper in the future dictator's ear about a huge plot to overthrow him and they would continue to mention this to the point where Hitler would order a serious and shocking action and purge. The Night of the Long Knives was the purge that occurred in Nazi Germany between the 30th of June and the 2nd of July 1934. Hitler, who was the Chancellor, pushed by Goering and Himmler, ordered a number of political executions and killings, which reigned to consolidate his own power and make him stronger. The main target of the purge was to rid the SA, or Hitler's brown shirts of their power, and to limit the power of Ernst Rome. There was a concern within Hitler's inner circle that Rome could become more powerful than Hitler, and he had a huge force who were incredibly loyal to him, the brown shirts. The executioners who carried out the purge were the SS, Himmler's paramilitary force along with the SD and the Gestapo, and each of these organisations as Hitler's stranglehold over Germany increased would become incredibly feared. 
Goering's own personal police battalion were also carrying out acts of slaughter, and many of those who were executed were leaders inside the SA, including Ernst Röhm, who would be shot. Röhm was one of Hitler's closest friends and longest standing supporters, but he would not be spared. Amongst those killed in the purge included many rival politicians, including Kurt von Schleicher. It's said that at least 85 people died during the purge, but the actual death toll may have been up to a 1,000, and over 1,000 political opponents and suspected rivals had been arrested. The purge would strengthen the control and support that Hitler had, and the Knight of the Long Knives established Hitler as a supreme source of power within Germany, and over the next few years he would turn the country into a dictatorship. However, Ferdinand von Bredau was amongst those who were executed in the Night of the Long Knives. He was, as mentioned, seen as a possible opponent and dangerous one of Hitler, and because of this, Hitler ordered his slaughter. He was murdered in Berlin by SS men who had come from the Liebstandarte Adolf Hitler. Bredau, on the afternoon of the 30th of June 1934, was drinking tea at the Hotel Adlon in the German capital. Whilst he was here, he heard his close friend and ally Schleicher had been killed, as a radio broadcast announced his death. At this point, a foreign military attaché, who were also at the hotel, offered to protect Bredau and to take him to his embassy, but he refused this offer, and it could have saved his life. Bredau then said to them, I'm going home, they've killed my chief, what is there left for me? He knew that things were over, and that he would probably be hunted himself. That evening when he got home, he rested for a short while, before there was a knock at the door. Von Bredau would then, as he opened the door, be met by an executioner who pointed his weapon at his face and then shot him at point-blank range, instantly killing him. It was said, in a moment, he had joined his chief, but it was clear that an executioner had been sent from Hitler to carry out his killing. Hitler would justify the killings and the purge in a speech to the Reichstag, and he said, If anyone reproaches me and asks me why I did not resort to this regular courts of justice, then all I can say is this, in this hour I was responsible for the fate of the German people, and thereby I became the supreme judge of the German people. I gave the order to shoot the ringleaders in this treason, and I further gave the order to cauterise down to the raw flesh the ulcers of this poisoning of the wells in our domestic life. Let the nation know that its existence, which depends on the internal order of security, cannot be threatened with impunity by anyone, and let it be known, for all time, to come down if anyone raises his hand and to strike the state, then certain death is his lot. But Ferdinand von Bredau was a long-standing member of the German military, but he would be seen as a problem by Hitler, but at the age of 50, he was executed in cold blood inside of his home. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.